Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's Buff Geek here, and I am joined by... Uh, what up, guys? It's David, and I am also back. I, I don't know why you got so dramatic, but it started getting Kirkesque. Well, I was going to say, I think it, the, I just channeled the Shatner there. <laughs> you shat yourself, I it? absolutely did. So, this is our movie news show. Uh, yep. Um, otherwise known as the really quick one before David passes out. The quickie before I fall asleep. Yep, that's pretty much how it is. This is the midweek quickie that you kind of give to the wife when you're fucking tired. And, you know, if you don't, then she thinks you're fucking having an affair. Am I right? I'm right. I'll, I'll let you think what you want about married life. <laughs> <laughs> so I presume it to be. I mean, <laughs> this sex thing. Yes, that. Right. Okay. I saw. Actually, doesn't matter. Let's I'm move on. To you. <laughs> um, so, just real quick, opening this week is Blade Runner twenty forty nine. I used to think it was shit. I went from thinking that Blade Runner was shit to thinking it was pretty good, and not liking Harrison to thinking actually it's amazing. And I'm going to. I already watched. The final cut today, and I'm possibly going to try and watch the kind of 80s VHS version. I don't know which na- what name that's under. One with the voiceover this week. Do you like Blade Runner that much? No. Cool. I so- watched it once years ago, but I think possibly when it first came out on DVD. Right. If you know what I mean. And just didn't... It says bef- before my time, I think. I just didn't quite get it. I-, I-, I did at the time, and it was okay, but it's not a film I go, fuck, that's a... That's all like amazing film. I hope in thirty years' time they do a sequel. Do you know? What? It's, for me, it's just it's just a really nice f- film to look at. The music is amazing. Like, it's just it's just it's just a nice film, mm. and it's got some good. Um, what's the word? Not connotations. Well, probably does of that as well. But it's definitely thought thought provoking, right? And I just think this one is going to be really good, based on who's involved in it. And that's almost got me more pumped for the original. Anyway, that will be that reviewed next happens, week. Though. Yeah, like something associated with something else can get you really pumped. Like listening to some of the scores for films makes me want to watch the film again. For example, and like a band releasing a really good song will make me want to go and suddenly re-listen to all the albums again. And you're like, why didn't I listen to this more? Why? Like these guys were fucking amazing. Yeah, right? it's like one of the podcast I mentioned earlier that I listen to is a band that I love and they've been on hiatus for a couple of years and so just listening to them talking and talking about the band and stuff like that I'm going back and just my playlist at the moment is just all their music again just to I don't know what it is it's just that association yeah. like you're saying so no so did you say you've seen Blade Runner 2049 no I've not seen it yet you've not it seen will, it yet no it's not out yet but while I will see it I'm thinking of going to see it Friday right um, and I'm hoping that I can wrangle your brother in to review it because he's a big fan of this film and he'll know way more than me I mean it's Ridley Scott it's um, Denny Villeneuve it's you know like, it's Blade Runner he knows more about all those three subjects Ian is a walking IMDB yeah so yeah you've let you there is he yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah IMDB yeah. man I've always said he's just he's like a database of film and movie, film and movie, film and TV knowledge. Well, certain types. Yeah, certain to a types. point. Or do we do we put in the obligatory indie movie bashing here, or do we no, just no, leave, we'll leave it that. as a compliment? Yeah, leave it as a compliment. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so one of the biggest things about, about movie news that's came out this week, well, it's allegedly big. I don't care about. I think it. it's fucking huge. Oh right, is um, that Kate Winslet is going to join the Avatar two? I'm looking um, at the wrong bit. Store uh, <laughs> you totally are uh, the, the Avatar two film and potentially all the other sequels and another thing that dropped about Avatar is that there's um, there's been pictures released of a very young cast which is meant to be the the kids and their friends of the the main uh, protagonists yeah. of the original film which is with Charles Worthington and Sam Beige Sam 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 Beige uh-huh. Sam Worthington Sam Beige and Gamora beige. Oh, I was going to say, is it not Zoe Saldana? So, does this, for me, I don't give one piece of no, piss you about really this. you really don't. I fucking hate this franchise. I hated it at the time. I got fed up hearing about it. I, I, uh, I spent time with a woman who had a kid, and he watched it all the time, and I still fucking hated it. And... I don't get it. Like we went to Comic Con, which we've never talked about, and we will eventually when we all get together. I met a Power Ranger. I met two. Yep. Um, 
but I didn't see again one person dressed as a Navi. I don't at Halloween. I don't see any of them. I do not think the Avatar. I think it. I don't think it's going to work, and I don't think people are going to go see it. The films are being filmed four in a row for two hundred and fifty million each. Uh, I suppose. I think this. Do you think that it's going to work? Do you think that anyone cares? I think this new casting is definitely going to create a Titanic shift. No, 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 no. I think if they're getting people like Kate Winslet, who is consistently quite a good actress, you know, you can't take that away. She is good. Um, obviously, she's got Titanic as her big sort of thing behind her. That's twenty years ago, thirty years ago. Uh, 97, 20. 20 years ago. Apparently James Cameron has wanted, has spent 20 years waiting for the right project to call it into. Right, okay. Although I think he's only done like, I think he's literally only made Avatar and one other thing in the last 20 years. Yeah. So. <laughs> and so, yeah, so that reunites them. That's no big deal to me because this is totally fucking different from Titanic. Well, so do you mean do you like Avatar? Is, it, is I it... I like Avatar. I've watched it a few times. I I would watch it again before Batman versus Superman, Man of Steel, or Suicide Squad. Straight up, yeah. Oh, I right. do enjoy it. I do like it. I can't get through it. No, there's certain films that I will I cannot get through. With the Babadook, couldn't get through it. Switched it off. Happened to me with Chicago. Oh, Chicago's pretty shitty. Oh, it's not was... good. It was one night, I've probably told this story before, one night years ago I still lived at home with my mum and we had two DVDs, my brother sitting there, we had phone booth, we had Chicago, I'm like what do you want to watch? And I says, well, can I really go wrong with a musical? Let's put that on. We've got 20 minutes in and I'm sitting there and I looked at her and I was like, this is crap. And she's like, thank God, change it. And we put phone booth on and we're like, how interesting can a film be set in a phone booth? And it's fucking brilliant, you know? Yeah, and that film alone... It. Just shows how good Colin Farrell can be. Yep, and how a good voice actor can make a difference as well. Yeah. Kiefer Sutherland, fantastic. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, Kate Winslet, good luck, enjoy it. Um, Would you go see the, the these other films? Bear in mind that you miss loads of films. I don't know if I'd go see them in the cinema, but I will. I, I would love to get the cinema experience of Avatar because they're usually done in the, the latest technology. You know, Avatar was I, that's the... What I, th- I think it's just a gimmick. Avatar was the first IMAX shot film or 3D shot film. It was one of Yeah, two. it made a whole genre that I hate. Of 3D? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know. I, I think I would go see IMAX 2D. I'd love to see that. I hate 3D. Well, then you'll be doing a, a, a solo podcast with I'm not watching it. Not I, I, I love all you folks. I cannot watch this film. It is bad. Let us know if he should be watching Avatar. I'll I'll put up a Twitter poll later. If you motherfuckers pay for it, I'll go see it. Or if you get me on on if you pay and give me the movie cut movies thing, I'll watch it. Uh, Yeah, well we'll we'll see. I'm not. I don't want to watch it. I'll bring the DVD round. (laughs) Right, moving on. Moving on to what I thought you were going to talk about when you said this is fucking good. Go go. Live action Sonic the Hedgehog movie in the works with Tim Miller and Paramount. This is the reason Tim Miller left Deadpool. It has to be. He's seen a bigger opportunity in Sonic the fucking Hedgehog and left Ryan Reynolds. Did you see that go past? I did. The wind just caught it and it just fucking cartwheeled over there. (laughs) Um, Go. (laughs) Okay. Tim Miller has done a lot of films that I don't like. He's done a lot of films that you do like. No, he's not. Yes, he has. Like what? Name one. That I do like? Yes. Well, no, because that would... I, I'm i arguing that it has... But to what? argue against, you have to argue for. Okay, so... Ar- no! See, he's done Go For Broke. Go For Broke, Rockfish, In The Rough, The Goon, the, A Gentleman's Duel, and Deadpool. Exactly. And I never, haven't seen any of those films apart from Deadpool, and I don't even like Deadpool that much. He did the title sequence for Thor The Dark World. Whoa, did he do The Girl With The Dragon Tattoo? Maybe. Probably got her drunk. Creative director. Yeah, I don't like him, and I don't like his work. Well, then this could suck for you. I honestly don't know what to make of it. Kev, you're the Sonic expert here. We need your input on this. You're the you're the guy with Sonic on one arm. He's got a Sonic tattoo. I don't. 
I think Sonic, if done right, could be Anything if done awesome. right could be good, but, but do you think that they're really going to get Sonic right? I think they'd have to aim at an adult market to nail it. And I don't mean that in that we need blood, gore and everything, but we need doom, we need peril, we need... We need banter. Yeah, we need banter. You need it taken... See if you've got knuckles in there, like just ripping the piss out of everything and be like, oh great, you go for it Sonic kind of thing, you know. Like total sarcastic all the time. Make it better, but I don't think it needs to be aimed at adults maybe. I don't think you can do it. Although I used to buy the Sonic the comic and it was pretty fucking good. Yeah, and Sonic the the cartoon was okay. It was a bit of fun, but it was childish. You know, it was aimed at kids properly. This yeah. needs to be aimed just His above voice teens. Wasn't right, yeah, though, in the cartoon it needs to be aimed just above teens. So like, but it needs 20s. to. It, I think they need to without get, going get for the, the R rating. In, get the kids in, but also make it something that we would go and see. Yeah, but honestly, I don't think anyone will go see it. So what do you guys think? So what do you guys think? Do you want to see the Avatar films? Do you care about Avatar? Because I sure as hell don't. Do you care about Sonic being live action? Speaking of live action. Yep. There's been a new cast and announcement for the Bumblebee spin-off, hasn't there? Oh, there has been, yes. There has been indeed. Um, Some no-name voice actor named Peter Cullen. Yes. Um... And some people have actually questioned whether that means he'll be Optimus Prime or not. Yeah, well, that, that's the thing. I mean, if you look up Peter Cullen's list, there is a lot more than just Optimus Prime under the Transformers he's played. Well, that's the thing. He's done loads of Transformers. And he's obviously done loads of G.I. Joe because he was part of that whole side of things. He was Venger, which is, is probably, for me, his best voice work. And did you ever watch Dungeons & Dragons? I don't remember much about it at well, all. Dungeons and Dragons, he basically Venger basically had Optimus Prime's voice but reverberated by using his own throat. Oh, okay. And he was fucking wrecked after every take. Ah. Uh, yeah, but it's amazing. Yeah. And he does the Optimus Prime voice in it as well when Venger uh, pretends to be good for an episode and disguises himself. Would you watch it if I let you borrow it? Mm, probably not. Cool. Uh, I'm just being honest. <laughs> Cool. Uh, like I said, maybe before, I'll show you a clip of his, him and his voice. Yeah. Or, yeah, maybe I do that. I do that. His voice is brilliant. Don't play his voice. I'm not gonna play his voice. Okay. Oh shit! He looks like a proper pimp, doesn't he? Ah, oh, he does. With a fucking he... pimp tash and the total, whole thing. Total pimp. And he's Nemesis Enforcer in GI Joe. Yeah. Oh it, no! Look, there's the. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Bumblebee's already credited there. And it says. Optimus Prime. All oh, right. Well, there we go. But he. He could have been someone else. Unlikely, because it's too... I don't think he voices any of the other Autobots in the films. And I think his voice would be too iconic. But back in the 80s, you know, the main cast... Oh, he voiced Sindar and Visionaries. The main cast would do a little bit of voice work on the side there. Um, for, like, the, the like just even, like... You always have, like, one random villager in He-Man or whatever voiced by one of the main guys, and you're like, why is Skeletor voice for the villager uh, you know or... he's done the voice of Eeyore at one point as well oh did he he's done a lot of Eeyore actually yeah I did not know that everybody's gone to the party but me well what do you what do you feel about the Bumblebee spin-off because apparently it's meant to be like the Iron Giant which I've never seen you might have seen it no nope, nope. I haven't seen it so I can't comment on Iron Giant but it's but... meant to be basically giant robot with small boy and uh, bonding bonding and... And you you get sad when the, the robot gets hurt and uh, okay. it's kind of like a like a kid and his dog like kid and his robot you know yeah so are you excited for a Bumblebee film I'm not I've given up I'm struggling I think I'm gonna really struggle to get the last night watched I should have stuck with my my gut before we started recording the podcast when we talked about Peter Cullen I said he was Optimus Prime and Ironhide yeah and I said and a few others. No, he was just Optimus Prime and Ironhide. Oh. I should have stuck with that. I thought he did I thought he did three, actually. Yeah, well, Maybe not. it says two here, so I'm going with that. He was in Voltron as well. Now, you know. Oh, yeah, he was the voice of Voltron. No. Wasn't he? No, sit down. Uh, <laughs> no, he was, he, was, he was in Voltron, you're right, but I... What was oh, the voice I don't of know. Voltron? <gasps> Bigfoot and the Muscle Machines, remember that? No, I don't remember that. Neither do I. So, anyway... That's us. So yeah, 
Who do you voice in Voltron? Random, lots of random people. Oh, right. Uh, That's pretty funny. Hutch, Commander James Hawkins, Coran, you King you, Alpha. Have you seen the Voltron and on, the, on, Net, blah, 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 on Netflix? No. I watched the first season. It's pretty fucking good, actually. Yeah. Pretty fucking good. Although they call the Voltron animals lions and they look more like panthers because none of them have got a mane. You know? That's shite. It's kind of weird. Idiots. Okay. <laughs> Getting really aggressive now. It's kind of scary. Um, what do you think about Jenny Slate being in Noga- Negotiations. Negotiations. To join Hom Tardy, Michelle Williams, and I can't mix those. Riz, Riz Ahmed. Ha- 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 Haz Ahmed. Yeah, go yeah? for it. Yeah. And the Venom movie. Now, I don't know who Jenny Slate is. So is she I from Google her. She is not from the block. Okay. She ap- appears to be a voice actor, mostly. I don't know. I don't know actress, but she used to have to do a lot of voice acting work there, and is a comedian. Oh, okay. Um, and does a couple. I mean, none of the films there I've seen or want to see ever. Oh well. Best so, of luck to you, Jenny. You might enjoy Venom. That's do you, do you know who she is? No, nope, haven't got a clue. Okay, so That's for why we're our, skipping past. for our money, <laughs> it doesn't pump our nads. Um, in terms of the Venom movie with. I, it's, it's a decent <laughs> cast so far, so you know. Who's Riz Ahmed? Don't know. I was just going with Tom Hardy and Michelle, Michelle Williams. Williams yeah, yeah, me too. Um, we don't claim to know everything, folks. No, nope. we don't claim to know everything. I don't claim to know anything. Yeah. Now I think your next piece is probably going to fill well, the rest I, of the time. Yeah, that's what I kind of thought. So maybe I'll just jump on a couple other quick things and see if you quick fire round, quick fire round. The new Men in Black spin-off won't feature Will Smith. How do you feel about it? He helped create it, but there's more to life than Will Smith. And the Men in Black, they should now be focusing on the universe like John Wick. If you were to have a continental TV series that we've talked about before, yep. and there's been rumours of, you could do the same with Men in Black. You could have more focus on the corpora- the corporation, the, the group, yep. rather than a new person trying to be Will Smith. You know what I mean? So don't have it as J&K. If M and N, yeah, exactly. M and N. That, that won't be hard to say or anything, you know. Especially well, if N wants priority, N and M. That's just fucking weird. I don't know if I told you this before. Maybe you already knew, it's but okay. they they want it to. A lot of men. Really? Yeah. Oh right, it happens for the first time of the night, and right. okay, and it happens to you. No. Not to you. No. Why not? Because I'm awesome. Right. So now I'm less awesome. Right. You're the better male. I'm alpha. Oh, right. Actually, I was told never to use the phrase beta male by Steve because it's all the, the guys who wear the, the skinny jeans and the, the I don't know, I can't remember, but it's guys who are not manly, apparently. Now you know. I did not know this. No, me neither. Interesting. It's an official term. Anyway, um, so yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think it's a bad thing. So apparently they still want to combine Men in Black with 21 Jump Street. I was about to ask that. Is that still going ahead? I've never seen the Jump Street films. So oh my God. Okay, so the first one is fucking hilarious. The is second it? one, for me, people said it was better than the first. For me, it felt like, oh, this is one of the scripts they turned in for the first one and called <laughs> the second one. Yeah. You know? It, it just wasn't, it wasn't as good. But the pairing of the two of them is brilliant. Channing Tatum doing comedy is fantastic. Jonah Hill, I think it could actually work if if they had the Twenty One Jump Street guys, and then they get Stop huckled, an alien. and they're like, "Listen, get Rip Torn involved," and he's like, "Listen, boys, you know." Did he survive? Aliens? Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. Aliens are real. We need some new cops. Here you go. And then they're, they're just them two being like, like. Would well, I not devalue the hard work Will Smith goes through in the first film to become part of the Men in Black? Or maybe, I don't know, it depends how they want to do it. And then they, at the end they just mind wipe them. Can, but can you imagine Channing Tatum, because he was, oh you've not seen it, but he's like, for people that have seen it, he's like in love with like a Lambo, he wants like this Lamborghini. Can you imagine him just like being in, like super in love with like the fucking like ray gun or something like that? Yeah. You know what would be quite it'd funny? It's funny. As if there was an absent period of time in the film where they go like four days in one of the Jump Street films, they end up going like four days and they have no recollection of the time that's passed. And then they fill it in And later. then they fill it in with a Men in Black film and they get mind wiped at the end of it. 
Oh, that'd be sweet. So there you go. That's meta. You heard it here. So I'm not. I don't think you need to have Will Smith in Men in Black, nah. but I wouldn't be upset if they did. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think it, it couldn't. It couldn't hurt it. But then, if they're going to do the twenty two Jump Street, twenty one Jump Street thing, then Will Smith being in there would feel shoehorned. Mm-hmm. It's, it all depends on the script at the end of the day. Yeah, this is true. Um, speaking of script, the script is finished for Edge of Tomorrow. Hashtag segue. Um, Edge of Tomorrow two, but Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt schedules are causing some problems for the production. So, do you think that Edge of Tomorrow two will ever happen? Because it's been several years. It wasn't massive, massive. I've not seen the first one. And I think it's a film I would probably like. It is, and you would. Because it's almost like video gaming, but real life, but video games. Kind of like Gamer, but better, apparently. Yeah, I've not seen Gamer. Gamer's alright. But it seemed alright. Yeah. It seemed like it looked alright. It's not a bad film, it's kind of like The Sims. Is it a bit, a bit cheap, though, a bit cheap. A little Low bit. budget. Yeah, but it still really works. It's got the de- guy from Dexter, who's fucking Michael awesome. Michael C. Hall. Yeah. yeah, Michael C. Hall's brilliant. Yeah, he's... Who's doing like a really good rendition of ba- David Bowie? He's in like, that film? Or? No, he's he he goes around doing like oh, right. singing David Bowie songs. Oh wow, okay. That's he's actually pretty good. Yeah, doesn't sound like David Bowie exactly, but he's pretty good. Yeah. Um. Okay. So not much I can provide on this one, unfortunately. But Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt schedules causing production start issues because she'll be doing quality work and he'll be doing. Churning. sequels and remakes and yeah. churning and making money yeah and probably earning more for doing a lot less yeah I, I, Tom well, Cruise has passed it he needs to do something a transition into the, the comedy thing or the older man thing comedy or... serious drama like actually having to work emotionally rather than just running about and beating people up he can he can do that though. Ah, he doesn't know. He needs to turn down those it kind depends of people. Depends on people want you for you know. And the thing is, he at the end of the day, be, he could be revered in the same way Leo is. You know, because everyone knows he could have been. Yeah, you're everyone right. knows Leo is a versatile actor. Yeah. You know, ever since Blood Diamond, I've been like, holy fuck, he's actually quite good. You know, and uh, and he he does different things every time. And yeah, he throws himself in a bit too seriously, and he eats. He gets fucked by a bear and eats a liver just to get an Oscar and stuff like that. But he fucking puts in the effort. And he thinks about it and changes it. Tom Cruise just turns up, acts like himself, gives a smile, punches a couple of guys, you know. Tom Cruise could have been... Like, he was doing the work of a Leo. Like, sorry. Leo Younger and and Tom Cruise Younger are like the reverses of what they are now. Yes. Leo was almost like typecast as the pretty boy, but then he hit like... Blood Diamond, The Departed, and Gangs in New York was the one that did it for me. And people start to go, oh, you know, there you, there you go. We're we're eating into David's DCEU rant time right now, you know. Oh, sorry, sorry, no, no, sorry. it's fine, it's fine. I'm because it's just it's no different to what I've said in the website. Well, 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 well maybe said. maybe not read the website. However, maybe. yeah, Leo, awesome, Tom Cruise, just fucking. I so would, you don't even care about this? Yeah, it's. I need to see the first film to see if I would get pumped Edge to more, yeah. Edge to more having a second film works. The first film's brilliant. Right. Emily Blunt is fantastic. You would love it. She's British, isn't she? I'm not sure. She's super hot. You would love this film. Like, you know when people say, like, I like this film, so you should watch it because I think you're going to like it the same as how I like it. Yeah. Okay. This film, you will like probably better than I like it. And I like it quite a bit. You yep. will vibe with this film, man. She's a Londoner. <laughs> anyway, the last thing. Would you like to read it out? Jeff Johns insists the DCEU films are connected. De-emphasises cinematic universe. And also <laughs> says that DCEU never existed. That was just a phrase that fans termed. And it's actually just DC Let's... movies. So what's this mean to you? Then? So we've got people who actually give a shit enough to give us a label. And it's not a bad label, and it's not, like, misleading in any way, but I'm going to come out and contradict y'all, and just piss off even more people. Well, should it be called the DCCU? DC Cinematic Universe? Like, it's the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Yeah, I think it was kind of to differentiate between the two of them. 
I think it's been called the DCEU for so for two years now. Yeah, and, and then they just go, oh, by the way, that's not the name. Exactly, and then they're also saying these films are unrelated. These films are related. These aren't related. Now, what they're saying, sorry, what Jeff Johns is saying, is that the films are connected, but each film is not designed to set up another film. So, whereas, yeah, well, that for was example, from... Iron Man Two was designed as a lot of setup. Iron Man 3 was had quite a lot of uh, ramifications from Avengers that Tony was playing with. Mm-hmm. Um, various films in the MCU have... There's been a lot of setup for other stuff. Ant-Man, for me, was just a long setup film and was unnecessary. Yeah. In fact, I really dislike that film. We know. Um, you want evidence of it? Go listen to the Ant-Man podcast or check out Stu's stats. Or check out the MCU Movie Review Rankings episode. Yes. Which is crazy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's... there's there's. I think it, it kind of makes sense. Like, they're basically saying that people... Every film is not connected to this larger purpose. Right. Which is fine in the same way that Marvel is crescendoing towards Infinity War. Which is kind of but that might be the first 10 out of 10. Possibly, yeah. Um, I think that that makes... That's, I get what you're saying, but at the end of the day, if you've got like 10 different films with 10 different guys or girls that are all in the same universe, why wouldn't you bring them all together eventually? Mm-hmm. So it almost feels like DC went, let's do it differently and just start with the teams and work backwards didn't work and now they're start trying to start small and do it. So I like the fact that they took a took a different approach to try something different. Yep. But actually as it turns out it might have been better if they just did a Wonder Woman film, a Batman film and just there's a reason why the formula works. So exactly. they probably should have just done that and it would be less it would be less confusing for people. Mm-hmm. The general purpose. Me, I find it okay. But I'm smarter than most people. <laughs> so what can I say? Yeah, I'm I'm getting a bit you went on some massive rants, so why don't you succinctly tell us what um, tell us about the 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 article you wrote on the Buffkeep Podcast blog dot wordpress dot com? Uh, yeah, so weeks ago I called this in a way. Yeah, you actually did call it because I said that they're just using it as an as a get out to abandon <laughs> their projects. So we're building up Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, you know, Flash. Uh, cyborg Aquaman we're building up all them but if it doesn't work it doesn't matter because we can still keep producing films and just say they're not related so <laughs> they're just creating a get out for themselves and I think, just... think they're literally sort of flashpointing it right now they're, I bet they fucking wish they could <laughs> do you think they said to Joss Whedon we're... right listen it's went a bit fucked up uh we could flashpoint this shit. We like everyone likes the cast, so can we just kind of? Can you get us to a flashpoint situation through Justice League? Yeah, it's possible. And you know they say to the Aquaman guy, "Well, Aquaman is going to be set prior to Man of Steel, like Wonder Woman. Not set. It's going to be set between Wonder Woman and Man of Steel. You know what that So means. it's going to keep it separate from everything. No, yeah, it's like. That's why they said Wonder Woman a lot of it in the past as well. Is because you're not left with the ramifications of other films. So the the destruction that was left behind from Man of Steel and the the aftermath that was cool. That was even better after watching Man of Steel for me. But the aftermath uh, BBS. of BBS yeah, and the Steel. destruction, the absolute fucking carnage that is causing BBS as well. And it's just if they go before that, they don't have to deal with any of that fallout. Either political, social, or physical. Yeah, so Aquaman's the next one out after Justice League. And then I think it's The Flash. Correct. So, yeah. So they, they could literally just flashpoint the fuck out of this. And it's just <laughs> a constant contradictory messages. Going back to the big red bold statement on with that rant, I ended up going on it in a way. DC need to fire their marketing team because they're doing a fucking shite job. Their marketing team is fucking wild. They don't have one. Their official press releases are coming from individuals. 
Jeff Johns, Casey Affleck, Ben Affleck, you know, it's just, that's where all their news is coming from, is other people. It'd be a crying shame if the DC fuck up Ben Affleck, who has the potential to be legendary as Batman. Mm -hmm. Henry Cavill, who, I mean, for me, Henry Cavill, Ben Affleck, Gal Gadot, all the people that are cast, apart from Cyborg, because I don't give a fuck about him, or Ezra Miller, Flash, they're, they're iconic in their roles. Mm-hmm. You know? So, to, to mess that up is just, just sad, you know? Yeah, they, they've, they've fucked it. They've not they're fucked what? it. They will. They're going to retcon it with the Flash, with the Flashpoint, and that'll be sweet. They'll make a really interesting, like, high stakes Flash film, and it'll still make, you know, 700 million or 600 million or whatever, it's just decent money. Yeah. And then they'll retcon that shit, and do you know, they'll probably just always feel the effects for, well, not always, but probably feel the effects for a little while. People aren't going to fully trust the property, but at the end of the day, the properties are too big to not make some decent coin. Yeah, they're still going to make their money from it. I just hope Ben Affleck stays. Because he's fucking brilliant. Get rid of him and replace him with Charlie Hunnam. Fuck off! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You never mentioned Charlie Hunnam in the last podcast. No, actually. I know, I realised that. It's, I was going to then, I thought, no, I'm not going to give it to you. <laughs> not even a little bit. What are you looking for? I was looking for a video of Justice League guys when you said Ezra Miller can fuck off. And it was something I thought you'd appreciate, but I can't find it. Well, you can't play the video anyway. Cause no, I wouldn't have played the video. Okay. Uh, I'd have played it soundless. Anyway. So, that's that's kind of a, our movie news. And what what do you folks think about um, these DC comments? Are you as pessimistic as David or optimistic as me? Do you think it's somewhere in the middle? Do you think that they have, like, their press is getting overshadowed by other people talking about it? Yeah. They, they, can, they, can they help that or not? I... Is that their fault? Well, that's they should be managing official messages, though, and people should be hearing things and going, oh, is that right? Let's uh, go and check with the official DC site. And they go and check with the official DC site, and they're just like, eh, whatever they say. I don't know. I look at the Justice League, and I think they'd punk out the Avengers in a fight. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> I don't. No? Nah. Superman would be wrapped up with Hulk. Superman would basically pump all of them. He wouldn't necessarily beat the Hulk, but he would be wrapped up with them. It's a really bad picture, but can you see what Ezra Miller is wearing there? Oh, no way. Yeah. Is he dressed like Edward Elric? He is dressed like... <gasps> you just put him over. He just... He dressed like Edward Elric for Comic-Con. If you see the the preview picture, it's, oh, it's not going to show it. <laughs> if you see the wee preview picture there, you see he's... Oh my god! Don't lie for me. He's um, sold to, He's been sold to me. <laughs> that's, that's actually, no, he's a good actor. I just uh, don't care about the Flash. That's why. Um, like if, suddenly, I was like, "Oh, that, that makes it slightly better." Have you seen the importance of being a wallflower? No. Well, it's got him in it. I want to say that it's got Hermione in it. It has got Emma Watson in it. Yes. And it's quality. Is it? He's brilliant in it. So brilliant. Well, there you go. Flash. Ah. Oh. Uh. Yeah, that was cool when I met the Flash. <laughs> the evil Flash. He met you. He did, yeah, it was kind of like that, wasn't he it? He came up and spoke to you. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of how it went down. So yeah, my DC <laughs> rant actually ended up not being a rant, but not, there's a textual version on the website, which... It's very ranty. <laughs> Where's that website? The buffgeekpodcastblog.wordpress.com. That one. Oh yeah, that one. And who sponsors the podcast? Oh, that's... Uh, that's uh, Samsung. <laughs> the, no. Wait, no, that's not Samsung. That's my phone. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog? No, that's not Sonic the Hedgehog either. Uh, okay. You've forgotten already. Uh, it's Alpha Fitness. Oh, yeah. The clue's in the name of the buff geek. Yeah. You can only get buff like that at Alpha Fitness. Of course. Of oh, course. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and where can I find them? Based on Stu's stats, I've what, spent three and a half full days just reviewing the films that I've reviewed and I rev- I watch every film I review but I don't review every film I watch nah. you know and I also watch TV series a whole bunch of other stuff so you know I watch a lot of stuff but I still make the time to work out and get buff so it can be done yes and still keeping your geek 
powers high. Mm-hmm. You can find them at the Buff Geek Podcast blog dot wordpress dot com. Yep. Uh, on all social media at Alpha Fitness or just through the Buff Geek. Yep. If you're looking for personal training, if you're looking for nutrition plans, training plans, prans, uh, also pran. tra- also ca- fuck it out. <laughs> also training plans. <laughs> you're slipping back to your um, your roots here. <laughs> I've got through half a roll of toilet roll in this toilet roll, toilet roll, toilet toilet lower. roll, lower arrow. <laughs> <laughs> anyway oh dearie me it's crap being sick and I, I get sick like once a year for like two days and that's it it's really annoying we want to hear what you guys think because you're probably all a lot smarter than us at this um, <laughs> are you more are you interested in the avatar film he says yay i say nay how do you guys feel let's sway the sway the tide here um do you think that they can actually do a Sonic the Hedgehog movie in any sort of good fashion? Okay. I don't think so. Mm. I also don't care for Tim Miller. Yeah, this is true. And Paramount just... Ah, oh, fucking... I never even clicked. It's Paramount. They bend every franchise over and get a wee squirt, don't they? Well, like, what ones have they bent over? Are they not the guys who do Transformers? Oh, I think they are. Yeah. Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> um, speaking of Transformers, do you care about the Bumblebee spin-off? I do not. No, I've given up. Given up. You've given up. I have, because like, I've still not watched The Last Night. Is it out on DVD yet? No. That's why I haven't watched it then. <laughs> Do you know what? I, yep. I did quite fucking like it, though. Did you? Oh, I liked it, yeah. I'll maybe give it a punt, then. I don't know why I liked it, but I liked it. I've seen Hot Rod as a... He's French or something? He's French and he's black, as opposed to red. Yeah. It was stupid. But I... There's parts of the mind that I really liked. I might have just been that new female that was just ah blah, 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 blah. Michael uh, Bay, Michael Bay, hot women rolling <laughs> up things. Um, do do you think Will Smith is integral for Men in Black? Do you are you excited to watch Edge of Tomorrow? Should David watch Edge of Tomorrow? You should let him know to watch Edge of Tomorrow. And what do you think about uh the DCEU not being the DCEU me. and me and uh, the the cinematic universe being connected but not connected and it doesn't have to be connected but it is connected to me there's a connection <laughs> is there a connection what's Probably. the connection don't know it's connected oh that's good clear that up clear that up um sign off motherfucker thanks for listening guys find us at the usual place uh I've just drawn a total fucking mind blank. The Buffkey Podcast Blog. Uh, yeah, you com. find us all there. You find me on the, all the usual social media at D Stoby. Over to you, big man, before I fall over. Um, <laughs> yeah, what he said, you'll find us there. Please like, share, and subscribe. All that kind of stuff. Tell your friends how fun we are, how we soldier through with me being sick, you being formally sick, and also just coming off double shifts yes. for two days. Because we love y'all. Come back next week for the Wonder Woman uh, review plus movie I were, news. I thought you were calling me the Wonder Woman there. No, and I will be getting to Buffy season three. I'm just um, doing some extra research on Buffy season three and talking about that. If you uh, if you like your Buffy or if you just you know want to hear about a cool show, check that one out. And I'll pro- probably be able to speak properly. <laughs> you don't do yourself any favors. Oh, hello. And probably review Blade Runner within the next week or so as well. Time and, you know, what's the word? What's this? What's this? It's not scenery. What's this 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 thing here? Like, so, like Locale. South outside. Locale permitting. Yes. Oh my gosh. Hashtag the Buff Geek Podcast. Do 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 do